Welcome to On The Chain. So congratulations. This is from Emmy Yakashawa. This is, and she is the, I always forget her title, her official title. Oh, so now it's Web3 in crypto at Ripple, XRPL, and she's based in San Francisco. But she put this tweet out here. She's congratulating James and team. So if we go deeper in here, you can see that Ripple is the proud winner of two awards and the Digital mm -hmm. Currency Awards sponsored by Currency Research and the, DC, uh, the hashtag DCC Oscars go to um, James Wallace for Digital Currency Leader of the Year and mm -hmm. da -da -ding, Ripple CBDC team for Best Sustainability Award for Digital Currency, Jeff. And there it is right That's there. Great. So you see James Wallace there accepting the award. And it looks, looks it's a cool like looking jacket. award, I have to say. Look at this thing. It looks like a hinge cool. or something. Doesn't it look yeah, like that, a medieval like thing we throw at awesome. somebody? That, that's very it, cool, actually. It's like kind of like an axe. It's kind of like a look like a badass that, yeti tool. Like a like a weapon almost, right? It, it actually that? that actually is a badass yeti tool. <laughs> All right, let's go to this. Uh, we talked a little bit about James Wallace getting an award. Now, James Wallace was featured on uh, CoinDesk. He was uh, interviewed, and they put an excerpt out on, on Twitter. We're going to listen in here. And then, Jeff, let's uh, want to get you guys' thoughts. Put your thoughts in here based on what James is saying here. And uh, unfortunately, what do I know James's title over there? What is James's title over there? James who? James Wallace. I don't know his title. We just talked. We just had him know. in that last story. I don't we'll know. Find what he out. We'll find out when we start talking. It just says Ripple's James Wallace. I, I don't know what it is. We'll, we'll find out. Anyway, let's listen in. There's, uh, I think there's some more education needed in the marketplace. I think um, there's things. a lot of discussion around a CBC, what it is, what it isn't. You know, is it the government going to be spying on citizens? Yes. All this kind of thing. So I think there's a education required. At the end of the day, you know, I think the federal government. Um, you know, Trump's uh, state governments in, in this. But I think really, I don't think the citizens Trump. have anything to be concerned about. You know, CBDC is a digital Good representation of fiat currency. Uh, it's likely to get implemented in pretty much every country around the world. It's coming. There are going to be some great advantages to it, great use yeah. cases that will, uh, you, you know, what. people will get benefit from. So what are the uses, uh, I see so? news like that. I think, okay, well, this will probably... Uh, disappear when people get a bit smarter, a bit more educated about what's really going to happen. That's right. Jeff. It's all going to disappear. It's going to be good. But you know what? From Ripple's perspective, man, I'd be, I'd also be saying that. I'd say, hey, you know what? It's going to be good. For everything you. like that. Yeah, Dude, you're going to love it. Cool. Everybody, everybody's going to embrace this product. You know why? Because we just made it and everyone's going to use the Ripple platform to build their CBDC. And you know what? If Ripple could pull that off, because I know that uh, at least with Garlinghouse at the head, at the head, as CEO, unless something happens and they and they upset the bandwagon a little bit, but I feel I don't want to say confident because you can never have confidence. Now you have another private entity that's going to be in control of uh, of the platform that money's built on, um, and it's going to go digital. But having that having that interference level to where they build a chain where they can they can incorporate privacy into it, they can do all these things. But one thing that we're learning very, very quickly is you can't trust it, mainly because of what's happening over at Ledger. And we'll get into that in a little bit, too, because there's some uh, things, Chip, that came out recently on Ledger of what they can or cannot do uh, with your accounts, which is a little bit scary um, to some extent. But we'll get into that deeper. What, what are your thoughts about what he said, Chip? Well, I, I want to know what the use cases are. There's going to be some really good use cases with it. I'm still... what. what Okay, what are the use cases, right? So it sounds like a great thing. and God. control. <laughs> there you go. That's some those great are use cases. Real, those are really good use cases. If I was a government, man, surveillance and control are at the top of my list. Now, there's no mistake at why China rolled out their CBDC first ahead of everybody. Everyone's like, they're so innovative. They're so ahead of the game. No, they're, they're, they're into control and they're into surveillance and they're into, yeah, people are like, oh, they're just fantastic. Well, that's, it's cool that they rolled it out probably ahead of anybody. And will a lot of co countries, I'm excited to see this roll out for a lot of countries, not in the U.S. It's not going to happen here. I think what he was commenting on was the, the states here, especially in the, good, the free state of Florida, you know, Ron DeSantis, who's the governor here, signed a bill that said no CBDCs in Florida. And what he was a, a, a basically speaking to was the fact that the, the, uh, the government 
at the, on the national level, it trumps anything that happens on a state level. And he's absolutely correct about that. But thank God we have the red team in the House of Representatives who have, there is zero appetite for a CBDC. Uh, most are outspoken against it. And it's so funny. And Jeff, this tells you a lot about it. You know who's for it? The blue party. You know who hates crypto? The blue party. Pretty much tells you everything you need to know right hey, there. There's not a lot the about, right? I mean, it's kind the of problem like, is they love to hate it too. It's not like, hey, we hate it, but they love to hate it. It's not, it's like, man, they're so passionate about their hate. Here's another. So Ooh. Ripple tweeted this out right here. Ripple's been selected to showcase a key CBDC use case um, for the, let's put this out, the so um, official Bank. Twitter account of the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, otherwise known as HKMA. Um, and it's the inaugural EHKD pilot program with Fubon mm. Bank. Nice. And look at this picture right there. Exciting. A lot of, uh, they're just like uh, happy to be on. there. Looks like one of those G20 photos where everybody's like just like standing there like still. But at least they're <laughs> smiling in this one, right? Hey, this guy's like not happy. Smiling. Like in the picture, he's like, I really don't want to be in the picture. I don't want to be in this picture. Why'd you tell in me? In the picture, he's like, I don't want to be in the picture. You know, get in the picture, to... guy. I don't want to be in the picture. Go ahead. I just about to eat lunch, and you guys took me to take this picture. Come on. For them. So last week we talked about Metaco, um, Ripple acquiring Metaco. They're launching their uh, CBDC platform to start rolling out. Uh, all over the world, and they hired ex Amazon CFO as part of the team. So they didn't really steal from Amazon uh, because it's an ex CFO from Amazon. But you know what? Ripple has been over over the period of time they've compiled a who's who um, of their board. They've got an amazing legal team. Uh, they have an amazing financial team. Uh, they're doing some great things on a global scale. And there's really no stopping them, you know, from a corporate structure perspective. Um, there's a lot of things that have come out, you know, based on their CBDCs and utilizing the XRPL and how important the XRPL is, uh, whether or not they end up using XRP in the platform, which we know they will, you know, and eventually want to be able to do, especially for ODL, which is the on-demand liquidity and all those other amazing things that are happening. But to get out there, you know, to this, this general uh, public, you know, so Steve is saying he left Amazon for Ripple. So there you go. So he, he yeah. people know the direction, especially at that level. They want to, these CFOs, they want to be part of amazing projects that, you know, Amazon's already reached its pinnacle. Amazon, there's no, there's really nowhere else Amazon's going at this point. Amazon is Amazon, like eBay is eBay, all the big companies, they've reached their pinnacle. Uh, so now he wants something that's exciting and new and something where you can put a, a huge stamp on. And moving over to where Ripple is going to be the epicenter of moving money on a global scale. Who doesn't want to be part of that? Um, and making sure you know that these guys held, are being held to accountability uh, to make sure they're doing things right. Um, but that's what I'm saying. You know, when they stole from Amazon, they stole something amazing. Amazon doesn't really need it, but they need somebody amazing at this point, and they got something amazing. So that's really really cool. Yeah, Jeff, if I could sum that up, I would say, tell us you're going public without telling us you're going public, right? There you go. That's that's kind of the add-on to the board. But again, this is a guy who's going to oversee the public filing. You heard it here. I mean, that's exactly what this is all about. If you yeah. know all the regulatory stuff you need to go through and you need to have everything buttoned up, it's, it's, an, it's an incredible venture to go public. It takes a lot of work and it takes an incredible team. And who would be the best team to put in place? Let's see. Uh, no, maybe the ex CFO, hire the chief financial officer away. It might be kind of cool. We're parsing language here. So yeah, we're just, we're having a little bit saying, of a person. We're just joking on the fact, you know, obviously it's his free system. He can go wherever he wants to go. The point is, is that they got a key asset, higher asset from, uh, from Amazon that had worked for Amazon. Like we said, he's reached the top of his class with Amazon. Now he's looking for, for bigger moves. So moving over to Ripple, big deal. Um, it, it's going to mean a lot of things. That's why we're getting all these uh, interesting comments here too. Larry said, it seems like they're posturing for a takeover of the financial payment system. A lot of things can happen here at this point, you know? So I like that audit transparency, things that are in the need right now for Ripple going public, like you said, it's really, really perfect um, position for going public. Now, does that mean, does that benefit in any us in any way at this point? If you own shares of Ripple, 
you're going to be doing really nice. You know, it looks like they're going to do some really, really amazing things moving forward. What does that mean for the XRPL and XRP? You know what? Even if even Chip, and here's my opinion on it, even if Ripple just paves the way uh, for the utility of the XRPL and XRP within their ODL platform, uh, even if that on its own, you know, doesn't have a major impact on massive price movement, what it does do is it normalizes the utility of the XRPL and XRP to be scaled at, at massive uh, numbers with other companies. And that's where it gets exciting is that they're understanding and they're seeing the, the foundation of how things are going to be transacted here in the near future. Even, even though those like uh, um, Elizabeth Warren and the rest of the cronies chip are trying to hold back and make sure that doesn't happen so they have full control over our money. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.